All right. If you had, obviously I've got this transmission tipped up on its side, but uh, when you can only get a second, fourth, or no, I think that's the combination. All you got is <clears throat> your selector cover here. It's got a three ten millimeter headed bolts in there. Just take that off. It's got an O-ring underneath it with some sealing on it, most likely. Just take. And I've already taken this one apart, but just tap it on the side; it'll pop off. Let's turn my alarm off here. All right. So then you've got that off of there. And I've actually put this one, I flipped this one over just a couple minutes ago to uh, show what you do here. It's very simple. You can take a socket or a ratchet. Let me tip in here so you can see what you got going on in there. There's just a 12 bolt right there. Put my flashlight on there. And we're just going, you'll have to excuse my sloppy camera work here. Uh, uh, I'm going to break that 12 loose. That's what it looks like. Just drops in there. Pulling it out. I like to use a magnet. You don't lose it and drop it into the transmission. Obviously this tranny's on its side. If you're doing this in the car, uh, a lot less likely to drop it in because this instead of pointing up it would be on a 90 degree point to the side a magnet though definitely use where the bolt was simply place a magnet on there oh you know i'm getting ahead of myself hold on a second let's come around this transmission dun, dun, dun. hold on one second you've got a 14 millimeter bolt here on the side of the case that pins your shift selector rod in. Can you see there? You're just going to take that loose. That's going to point towards the firewall in the car. You simply pull it out. You have to have this washer, so don't lose it. If you lose it, it'll lock the shifter up tight. It's actually a shim that stops the tip from pinning it down. And uh, you're just going to slide it back just a smidge, just a little bit. And this is just fully in the shaft here. You note the wiggle right there. All right, so we're just going to pull it back just a smidge, and what we're looking for is just to pull it. And you could you could pull it out if you wanted, but it's just as easy to leave it in there. Um, we're just pulling it back far enough. You're going to see the light come and go because I've got a headlight on my uh, my headlight flashlight on. But we're going to pull it back just enough to where you can pull that out just like that. Okay, you see that I've got it angled. See the angle in this unit right here? It's up and then towards the back. And let me give you a reference to the back. You've got your shift selector. So this does not point towards the back. You're simply going to spin it around. So now it's the other way. Take. Down inside there's a ball socket. Right. Oh. Try to look in the camera and look down there. You're simply going to take and put the bottom of this, which is a ball, onto the socket. And that socket, oh, there we go, cameras all over the place. Let me tighten it up a smidge. There we go. Um, want to get the shifter selector in there. And that ball socket inside there, as you can see, as I move this with my hand down here, that's what we're moving back and forth. So now I've spun that around. I put it in neutral, which is just push it in until it's in the center. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to raise this up so you can see the other side, maybe. I may just need to get back farther here. Maybe this angle right here is what I'm looking for. So you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to wiggle this hand right here, this selector, which would be going down if it was in the car. And I'm just sliding it right back in there. And once it's slid in, I pull my magnet off. 
and you'll see the threaded holes. This bolt right here, it's got a little um, the machine end on it so you can push it in to line the threads up. So you just give it a little wiggle just like that. It starts. Run it down tight like that. I'm going to tear this tranny down because it needs to be rebuilt. But uh, you just clean this off with a paper towel, a rag, card cleaner, whatever you want. I like to put a little bead of sealant around it. Clean this o-ring, leave the o-ring in there. Simply flip it back over. Install your three bolts. One, two, and three. Snug them up. Pull your speedometer gear out. You know what? I'm going to show you how to do that. And I am. Dun, 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 dun. If anybody's wondering why they're watching this video, it's kind of a boring video. I'm doing this for a particular person to get them on the road here. Um, here's your speedo housing right here. In fact, if you look down in there, you can see the plastic gear. Okay, with my headlight there. Anyhow, that's your where your bolt goes for your uh, speedo housing. Take that tent out right there, so it would look something like that. This one's all dirty because it's all gummed up. But you're going to take that tent out. Your housing, just wiggle it. It's O-ring sealed. You'll pull it up. Don't pull on the cable. God damn it! Let me tighten this thing up again. Shouldn't be in such a hurry to shoot this video, but uh, I've got some other things I need to get to. Um, so you take that out, pull the speedo housing out, put your funnel in here, dump in two and a half quarts of oil or your old oil. I would just drain it out into a bucket, put it back in, dump it in here, put it back in, and then you don't have to pull out the side plug and try to pump it in or whatnot would be here. I never remove those. Never I even if I ever have a leak, I'm fixing the leaks, so I'm draining the fluid out because you gotta take the fluid out to do anything on it. And then I just check how much fluid I have and I dump it back in. It's way simpler, way easier, just like adding oil to the valve cover that way. Okay, now we're going to come over here, and I'm going to actually have to hold this. You know what, you probably don't even care, but I'm going to go through the, the motion of the ocean here to show you. If I can get it in the camera shot. So we're going to go, uh, well, hold on a second. So, oh, if I can, I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not. Maybe I, oh gosh darn it, hold on a second. All right, so there's first, second, we're going to drop down. I can't remember if that's third or fourth, but that's both. And then we're going to go rotate down there, and fifth, and reverse. Don't hold me to that, someone's going to be backwards. I'm pretty sure I got that ratio right. But anyhow, that's the uh, cycle for it all. And uh, if you don't do that, then you can only get that one and well, that one, I believe. That's fixed. That'll get you taken care of. That's what you're running into. And... Uh, Got to have those right, and then when you do, and then also on the four cylinders, when you're putting a tranny in, you need to move your shift linkage stud from huh, the uh, your uh, rod. I mean, this is your shift linkage, and then your stabilizing rod to the transmission from the shift housing. You take uh, that stud out right there and uh, you relocate it into this hole right here that's what that's for you just put two nuts on here tighten them together and then the back nut back it out that'll unthread your stud put it right back in there and that is the difference in distance between a four cylinder and a three cylinder engine and that's why the axles are that much a different length and the engine mounts are uh, that much longer hope that should uh, fix you up and you'll be back on the highway uh,